powered by the Montana Television Network. This is the Noon News from Montana's News Leader. Good afternoon and thanks so much for joining us this Tuesday. I'm Samantha Sullivan and this is the statewide noon news. Well, new this afternoon, one person is dead after a crash in Park County early this morning. The Park County coroner says 22 year old Connor Mugnair died at the crash, which was reported just before two o'clock this morning north of Wilsall on Flathead Creek Road and Highway 86. Montana Highway Patrol says Mugnair failed to navigate a left hand curve lost control and was thrown from the vehicle. He was flown to a Bozeman hospital where he was later pronounced dead. We're told he was not wearing a seatbelt at the time of the crash. A passenger in the car also suffered minor injuries. The newest poll in the Montana's U.S. Senate House race U.S. Senate race details just how close this contest is with just two weeks to go until Election Day. MTN News and Montana State University co-sponsored this mail-in poll. Here's MTN's chief political reporter Mike Dennison with the numbers. Just about everyone thinks the race between Democratic incumbent John Tester and Republican Matt Rosendale will be close, and the MTN MSU poll says the same. According to the poll, Tester has a three-point lead over Rosendale, 46% to 43%. Only 2.6% said they would vote for Libertarian Rick Breckenridge, who was on the ballot, and another 8% said they're undecided or support someone else. The mail ballot poll was conducted from September 17th to October 6th, about 2,000 registered Montana voters responded. A mail poll is a little unusual, but MTN political analyst David Parker says there are reasons why it's a good choice in Montana. The response rate for this poll was 20%. That's the very top end of what we were hoping for in this poll. We felt we could get in the rural areas better. We also thought it would be less intrusive, more likely to somebody to actually pick it up and fill it out. The margin of error for the poll is plus or minus 2%, which means the race is a statistical dead heat. But Parker says the poll has some good news for Tester, besides an apparent lead. Independents favor him by 57% to 30%, and Democrats are united behind him. Still, he says Tester needs a few things to happen to win. For John Tester to win, number one, uh, those undecided voters, he needs to basically pick up some of them. He can't have them all go to Matt Rosendale. The second thing, he needs a turnout scenario that looks like 2006 or 2012, where the Democratic base shows up and those independents that overwhelmingly support him decide to actually vote. Yet Rosendale has some potential positives as well in the poll. Parker says it's possible that undecideds can break Rosendale's way and thus give him a bigger cut of independent voters. And with the help of President Trump visiting the state three times already, Rosendale is looking to rally his base and Trump leaning voters. For Matt Rosendale, the answer is basically get your base together, get them motivated, have them show up even though it's a midterm election. I don't think he's any chance he's going to get the Democrats to come over. So really his path is all about his base and also about those independents who voted for Trump. He needs to convince them to come out and vote for him. Let's not forget that Montanans have already been voting through absentee ballots for more than a week. But both campaigns will have their foot on the gas from now until election day. At this point, it's all about getting your supporters out to vote. Reporting from Helena, Mike Dennison, MTN News. And join us for our statewide 9 o'clock news on the CW tonight as we look at the results for Montana's U.S. House race between Republican Greg Gianforte and Democrat Kathleen Williams. Turning now to court news, documents are shedding light on the double murder at a Missoula motel last Friday. Two men now face homicide charges as police continue to investigate what led to the fatal shooting. MTN's Connor McCauley has more. According to court documents, three people were shot in room 228 of the Mountain Valley in early Friday morning. The victims have been identified as 23-year-old Jason Flink and 31-year-old Megan McLaughlin. A third person, Caleb Williams, however, did survive the attack and was transported to the hospital with unknown injuries. Upon reviewing surveillance footage, police discovered two men and one woman leaving the hotel in a pickup truck around 1 a.m. Friday. The video showed both males carrying firearms and the female was running. Missoula police arrested one of the male suspects, Preston Rosbach, early Friday morning. In his interview with police, Police Rosebach said Jonathan Whitworth, an unidentified female, and himself had gone to the Plugs Motel to find drugs. Whitworth was also identified in the video by multiple people interviewed by MPD. In court documents, the three entered the motel room with Whitworth asking if anyone had drugs. In the court doc, someone stated that they did not and the three people left. Rosebach told police that the group then made their way back to their vehicle, but Whitworth turned around and made his way back to the hotel room, where he shot three people. 
Rosebach claims to have not shot anyone and says that he did not have a gun on him at the time of the shooting. But MPD reviewed surveillance footage and has determined that he did have a gun on him and he will now face homicide charges in district court. Rosebach is being held in the Missoula County Detention Center on $250,000 bond. Whitworth was arrested Sunday near the Missoula International Airport. He is also facing homicide charges. In Missoula, Connor McCauley, MTN News. Thanks, Connor. In other news this afternoon, Montana's unemployment rate is at its lowest point in over a decade. The Montana Department of Labor and Industry reports unemployment in the month of September was 3.6 percent. The unemployment rates in each county range from a low of 1.6 percent in Daniels County to 8.9 percent in Bighorn. The national unemployment rate also fell in September, falling to 3.7 percent. With hunting season underway, there are a few ways hunters can give back to the community. Montanans can donate any legally harvested big game animals to local food banks through the program Hunters Against Hunger. Established by the 2013 Montana Legislature, the group allows those purchasing a hunting license to donate $1 or more to the fund, which helps cover the processing fee of the animals at participating meat processors. One Helena Butcher says he sees more and more animal donations every year. You see people every day standing at Walmart with signs and needing help, you know, and food is probably one of the bigger things they need. A single elk can result in more than 100 pounds of hamburger, which can help out a lot of families. Well, thank you so much for joining us here on the Noon News. Coming up, thousands come out to search for a missing Wisconsin teen over a week after her parents were found dead. The latest when we come back, but first, Ed joins us with a look at the statewide forecast. We're back in just a minute. You're watching MTN News with Samantha Sullivan, Storm Tracker Weather with Ed McIntosh, and Farm and Ranch News from the Northern Ag Network. This is the new news on Q2, Montana's news leader.